Welcome back. Well, the Obama administration says its policy is clear. The U.S. does not negotiate with terrorists, but it's moved to swap five hardcore Taliban fighters for American soldier Bo Bergdahl has prompted new and more deadly moves from terror networks. What's playing out right now with ISIS, for example, is adding fuel to the fire as we still wait for news on the fate of those two ISIS hostages. That terror group demands the release of a female bomber who's being held in a Jordanian prison in exchange for those two hostages. Joining us now with more on the fallout in this, on this, we, are, we welcome author of A Battle for the Soul of Islam and President of the American Islamic Forum for Democracy, Dr. Zudi Jasser. Welcome, sir. Great to have you here. It's great to be with you, Uma. Thanks for having me. You know, it's a very tough and dicey situation whenever there's discussions over prisoner swaps. And when you decide to engage with terrorists in this way, I know you and others are very concerned about this and that, and you believe that it only emboldens the enemy who sees this as weakness leading to further consequences since a hallmark of Western nations, as we stated, is that you do not negotiate with terrorists. Absolutely, and I'll tell you, not only as former American naval officer, but as a Muslim and uh, somebody whose family hails from Syria and is Arabic, they only understand fear. They only understand military power. And we saw with uh, Bush 43 that Al-Qaeda was on the way to being decimated, and they were decimated because we were feared. We are no longer feared. And you hear the administration this week, Uma, say that, well, the Jordanians are wrong to negotiate with ISIS because it's a terror group, while the Taliban was an armed insurgency, and they're not a terror group, and yet... Anyone who knows, only six, 12 months ago, ISIS wanted to change its name to IS, or just Islamic State, because of the sympathy from the Taliban. They wanted to get in jihadists from that area. So they, they want to continue. Our administration continues to want to put its head in the sand, stay in denial, and, and deny the fact that we're fighting a global ideology of radical and especially political Islam that wants to... Con and who were these five that we released? They were some of the top former minister of the interior, it was an al-Qaeda uh, high-level operative, intel for the Taliban, and now we see the Taliban in Pakistan blowing up mosques of, of Shia Muslims. So we are continuing to ignore the threat of the Taliban, and they tell us, I tell you, Oma, in their media, on their jihadi websites, we are the laughing stock of, uh, of the world, and that's why they're recruiting more and more jihadists. You know, we've had news that at least one of the five terrorists released from U.S. custody to secure the release of Bo Bergdahl is already trying to make contact with the Taliban after U.S. officials confirmed that his phone calls had been intercepted. Now, these five detainees are among the worst of the worst, as you point out. And is it any wonder that they're absolutely trying to get back to the front lines to wage to wage against the U.S.? No. I mean, these were not small little, you know, happenstance terrorists. They were high-level operatives in the Taliban. And they're going to go back. Sure, they're going to call home. And by the way, we released them to Qatar, who is not on the side of liberty and freedom. Qatar is the home base operations for the Global Muslim Brotherhood. And they've always been an intermediary, coincidentally, with the Taliban and have been funding, even there's some concern of arming ISIS and other groups. So it's no surprise that they're going to try to call home and you know, impose themselves back on the battlefield, and they're our enemies. So the question is, what is our vision? It may help and feel good to sort of in a whack-a-mole program get one prisoner back, uh, even though he was, uh, uh, you know, a deserter, but it may feel good. But the long term, it's putting more and more Americans at risk, and that's why the Taliban's blowing up churches, schools, mosques, and the radical Islam pandemic grows because of how we are portrayed as appeasers and weak in returning prisoners. All right, and on that note, I want to ask you how frustrating has it been for you to see the White House once again trying to draw a fine line of distinction between the Taliban and terror networks like Al-Qaeda, even though the Taliban remains on the official terrorist list. Why do you think it's so difficult for this administration to say that these guys are part of radical Islam. A new Fox News poll, for example, we can put it up on the screen, says a majority of Americans believe that we are at war with radical Islam. 
Well, Americans are smart. They're savvy. They understand that this is an ideological battle that doesn't understand borders. And the president, unfortunately, continues to, to operate with the pension that we're going to pull out and somehow the world will solve itself and it won't come to our shores and Paris didn't happen and et cetera, et cetera. And the bottom line is, is we don't have a vision. We don't have leadership. And we want to ignore the fact that al-Qaeda, the Taliban, ISIS are military. Islamists swimming in that same pool of political supremacist Islam. And if you're going to empower moderates and reformists like myself and all of our allies for liberty who really believe in freedom against political Islam, you have to call the enemy what it is. And you can't make distinctions between ISIS, Hamas, the Brotherhood, or Taliban. It's the same manifestation, just different borders. And until we have a strategy against them, it's going to only continue to increase the pandemic of radical Islam around the world. I mean, there are quickly uh, some, you know, in the final moments I have here, there are military leaders who are already saying that if you don't actually define the enemy, then you cannot defeat the enemy. And Uma, this is why this is so important. This is a battle within the House of Islam. The Taliban just killed 40 Shia Muslims. If you want to empower the opposite reaction, the liberal reaction, and, and unleash that silent majority of Muslims, you have to call the enemy Islamists, or else you let the radical Islamists define our faith. So either we surrender or we empower the moderates to reform and take back the mantle of Islam. There's no other option. Well, the stakes remain quite high. Dr. Jasser, always great to see you. Thank you so much for joining us. Thank you, Uma. Appreciate it.